December 22nd, 2017. Just stop. Why do you keep writing this shit? I know there isn't much news in Orange Grove, but it's been ages. Not literally, but you know. They are never gonna find them. I wish everyone would just stop, leave us alone, so I can forget the whole god-awful night. Some think my dad was a hero for trying to stop them. Truth is, we never saw them coming. When that guy jumped and stabbed my dad, something snapped, and I would have punched him, scratched his eyes out. I swear, I think I could have killed him, but the other one got to me before I even knew there were two. I never saw their faces, never did, did my dad, so they never caught them. I'm not fearless. January 5th. We're all just matter. That's what Kelsey keeps saying, and she's right. But matter is also life, and life is something we need to take care of. She likes to be out on a limb. She says she's got nothing to lose. Bam. She didn't even realize what she was saying. Or maybe I'm too sensitive. Guess that'll show me to believe that we were friends. I guess I am a shadow person after all. I think she's gonna break her neck, by the way. See if I care. Make sure I'm not missing any numbers. I love cats because they're not afraid to be difficult. January 19th, happy birthday, mom. January 28th, 2018. I'm trying to ignore the fact that all of Kelsey's cute stuff is paid for with Trevor's money. He is such a creep. I don't get what she sees in him. She says I'm jealous as if. Thing is, she thinks she needs him to get away from all of this, but she doesn't. She got away from her mom all on her own. Kelsey's the smartest, coolest, sweetest person you can imagine. She doesn't need anyone to get her out. She can do it all on her own. Too bad she doesn't believe that herself yet. January 14th, 2018. Fuck, I'm so stupid. I finally got to see La La Land. They showed it on Classic Night at the Theater. I went with Ben. Loved it. Kelsey was there too. I was happy to see her. I actually friggin' hugged her, and she pushed me away, asked me what I thought I was doing, and that Trevor asshole was enjoying the show and her stupid cheerleader friends. I am alone. February 16th. Okay, I've calmed down a bit. That La La night she was with Trevor and he is such a freaking fucking asshole. She's different when she's around him. Not that it makes it all right, but she did come straight over to tell me she was sorry. She knows she was wrong. Broke my window with that damn rock. She said if I'd answered the call of the pebbles, she wouldn't have thrown the rock. She's been here ever since, doesn't have anywhere else to go really, except for Trevor. I'm glad she'd rather sleep here. Right now as I write this, she's on the bed going over some notes from class. I like having her here, and Dad's okay with it. Um, March 3rd? Is that strip of paper? Uh, March 17th. Oh, the sparkly shoes. She wears them all the time. Last night the heels dug into my calf. That freaking hurt. Have you seen those heels? So I yanked them off her feet and told her not in the bed. She was amused. I can't think why. To be honest, I wish I was a size 9 because they look absolutely gorgeous. On Kelsey's feet, at least. When I tried them on, I looked like a little girl trying on mommy's shoes. March 17th. You may have noticed we journaled that there are less and less F-words in these pages. I am so freaking proud. Only when I go berserk, like when Kelsey threw that rock through my window, then it's hard to keep up. Did you know that as a little girl, I used to cuss abundantly? Trying to extend my vocabulary here. Dad thought it indicated intelligence, and I guess it looked cute. Up to a certain age, but he said mom hated it. So every time I used the F word, he made me put a piece of candy in the swear jar. Can't tell you how much that hurt every time, because I'd never see it again. I think he secretly ate it. He must have rejoiced. Yep, vocabulary extension again. Every time I swore like a madman. Mad woman. Must have. She called her my friend. She called me her friend today. I am not a shadow person anymore. She's my friend. April 9th. Kelsey is so angry at the world, like all the time. It's kind of annoying, but I get it. We all have a different story to tell. So as a friend, I did the only decent thing. I told her she could do anything she wanted. She just had to make it happen, not wait for it. I told her to deal again. Not drugs. The cards. April 11th. Kelsey broke up with Trevor, finally. She can do so much better than that total loser. He assaulted her in the school hallway. Of course, no one saw it happen, but he literally tore the clothes from her body. I promise not to swear, so there you go. But she's done with him now. Things can only get better. April 13th. I think he's crazy. 
He keeps calling me at the most impossible hours, just yell at me, calling me names, threatening me that if I don't let Kelsey go, he'll do this or that, as if I got her tied up here. I now unplug the phone when I go to sleep. April, oh, May 19th. Today was a good day. Only five emails from Trevor. Only five. I hope he's finally getting it. She's not coming back. He really holds me responsible for it. I can handle that if it keeps him away from her. When I saw him in the hallway this morning, he slid his fingers across his throat again. If he wasn't such a scary-ass clown, I'd laugh, but he does scare me. I don't tell Kelsey these things. She shouldn't worry. May 22nd. These are the good times that make me forget. All my troubles seem so far away. Wait a minute, is that a song? Kelsey took me swimming in Mr. Jones's pool. I was scared shitless the first time, but, uh, two beers and freshly picked oranges. Chill. Best nights ever. June 7th. Took me forever to convince Kelsey to ride a bike, because it ain't cool. Our rides are the best part of the day now, and on this day we rode them through Mr. Jones's orange grove in broad daylight. We got home with a basket full of the juiciest golden oranges. I didn't even think about getting caught. June 12th. They're not listening. I've tried every authority at school. I even tried the cops, but they just patted my shoulder. Poor little girl, still traumatized. Bump on the head didn't do her any good. Yes, I'm swearing now. A jar full of candy. What should I do? I wish I could tell Kelsey, but she'd go insane and get herself hurt. Or worse, go back to him. Trevor is dangerous. June 23rd. I know it's him, and there's nothing I can do. They never believe me. I don't think I'll ever see Bumblebee again. June 30th. I can't sit and watch. I'll have to be fearless. I found this site where you can buy guns off anyone. Not that I mean to shoot anyone. It's just, I don't know what to do anymore. It's for protection, you know. Isn't that what they say? Anyway, there was this guy who wanted to sell me this totally new 9mm. I'm meeting him out of town somewhere. A little shady, I admit, but with Trevor lurking around, I'll take my chances. There's been another home invasion just two blocks from here. They killed the woman this time, and the police think it's Trevor. Suppose it was him in our house? I can't wrap my head around it. It's too big. But Kelsey says it isn't true, that Trevor is a bastard but will never commit such violent acts. Looking at that torn t-shirt, I think she might be in denial there. July 5th. I did it. I hope I'm not going to regret this. July 7th. We needed this. Beer, water, and oranges, like so many nights before Trevor. No, I am not going to let him spoil my night at the pool with Kelsey. He who shall not be named, not today. I'm missing a page. Oh my god, I'm dumb. Three. I need to write it down. It's all the big numbers. Three. Four. Nine. Five. Wait, three, four, nine, five. Did she not enough numbers? Hell, it can only be so many numbers, right? What is the code, Marie? Wait. The journal. It must be in the journal. She must have written it. Yay! Good One. work, Kelsey. Oh my god. The past, like the future, is indefinite and exists only as a spectrum of possibilities. Stephen Hawkins said that. I wish it were true. But there was nothing I could do about the past. It was definite as hell. Sometimes I didn't get Marie. I really thought a night by Jones's pool would help her relax. She used to love it there. But she insisted someone had been watching us. I just wanted to have a good time. And she was ruining it, so I said some things I shouldn't have. 
She just stood there, staring at the window. I was so annoyed. And that's when I knew she'd been right. Trevor. Right there in the room. He'd just come in through the open window. How did he find us? He didn't know where Marie and I lived. I always made sure of that. But he took an orange from his backpack and started peeling it. It had been Trevor by the pool. And he'd followed us home. He said to Marie, I told you not to mess with me. But still, I didn't get it. No, it wasn't until he started moving in on her that I realized it was Marie. He was after Marie. He blamed her for everything, and he had a knife. I'd never seen him so angry, so evil. Marie tried to get it away from him. He asked her why she never answered her phone. Did she not read her emails? Or did she think they were hollow threats? God, I just wanted to punch him with anything I could lay my hands on. My backpack. I smashed it against his wrist, knocking the knife out of his hands. Marie went for it, but Trevor was faster. He kicked her in the head. I dove for the knife, but he jumped me. As we struggled, he hissed. Didn't I get enough action yet? Maybe I needed another baseball bat to get my kicks. Oh my I stopped. God. Because right then I knew what he was up to. He asked Marie about Mr. Torres. Was he all right? Did he still get stomach aches? Marie lay on the floor by the bed, in shock, realizing it had been Trevor who almost killed her father. Then Trevor looked at me, added with a smile. And her. That's when it all went to pieces. Trevor ripped us apart, and he was enjoying it. Marie didn't understand. I tried to explain, apologized, but she wasn't listening. She kept asking me if I'd been there with Trevor in their house. Trevor stirred things up even more. He told her it was me who had hit her over the head with a baseball bat, that I'd enjoyed it. I screamed in frustration. No, that's not what happened. Tears streamed down Marie's face. She couldn't believe I would do that. Hurt her deliberately. God, I wanted Trevor to stop talking. I attacked him, scratched his face, hit him wherever I could. I hated him. He was twisting everything. I wanted to tell her that I was sorry. Yes, we robbed the house. And we got caught by Mr. Torres. But I never meant for anyone to get hurt. I didn't smash Marie's head. I panicked. I wanted to stop her from seeing me. When I realized how badly injured she was, I called the police. I tried to stay, but Trevor wouldn't let me. He pulled me by my hair into the van. But Marie wasn't listening. I was losing it, and I like to think I beat Trevor up pretty good. But Trevor punched back harder and faster. He was about to crack my skull. Marie clawed for the box beside her, opened it. She screamed, told us to stop, pointed that nine millimeter at us. Trevor went nuts, charged for her. She screamed, told him to stay back. She'd never shot a gun in her life. She wasn't going to start now. Trevor grabbed her by the shoulders and... I what do you think you remember is not necessarily what really happened or how others remember it. But Trevor fell back on the carpet, dead. That we all remember. This is terrible. Mom, where are you? Did you get the journal? I'll be down in a minute. Anne Marie is getting a little worked up here. She threatened to smoke a cigar in your car. Don't let her. Don't let her smoke. I love that car. She knows you do. Get down here, Mom. You're taking, like, forever. I'll be down in a minute. Bring the journal. <laughs> Of course I knew it was her. Who else? There was only one thing to do. Get to Marie. She wouldn't talk to me on the phone, so what else could I do? 
drove all the way up there to Vancouver, freezing my ass off in that tin can of a car. Oh, oh okay. Uh, Jay, to read the journal? Okay, um, so here's the last page. I regret food rescue, I regret the science project, I regret it all. My father could have died because of me and my inability to pick real friends. Kelsey never was who she said she was. I never really knew her, it turned out. It's all been bullshit and I am so stupid, I should have realized it that la la night and walked away for good. Because someone died right in this room, I made him die. I pulled a trigger, made a bullet pierce his head, made his blood soak the carpet, drip through the cracks into the floor, where it will remain forever. To bear witness to what I'm capable of, I can't stay here. Am I the same me? I don't know anymore. I have to fix this, fix me. Away from her, I have to focus on the positives in my life and stop questioning myself. Why did she do it? Why did I do it? Did I deserve this? Am I an evil person? A killer? I shot him in the head for Christ's sake. I could have gone for his leg. Dad calls them intrusive thoughts. I say they're the truth. I'm stronger than I look. I can do this. I will go up north to Uncle George as Dad suggested. Nice and cool up there. I'll be able to think and finish high school. I'm leaving this journal here because I need a clean slate and fresh pages. I'm sorry. Dear diary, maybe I'll send for you someday when all of this is long over and I've dealt with being a murderer. Um, hi Kelsey. Yes, I'm talking to you. I know you've been reading my journal. Can I ever forgive you for what you did? Honestly, I don't know. I'm trying really hard, but I don't know how, because I don't understand any of it. You were my friend, and I loved you unconditionally. I did what I did because of you. I stood up to him because of you. But you? I don't know. Right now, I can't be near you, so I don't want you to come find me. I promise I'll be alright, Marie. look through all that door no that's her parents room okay don't need to go in there that's the bathroom okay oh hello what's happening no oh, I, I guess I guess that's it and then it's the credits That was... I don't know how I feel about that, actually. That was kind of sad and depressing, but also something that happens in real life. And that was a really good game. I hope they make more games. It was very short, but... I really like that game. Oh, it was a Steam Greenlight game, too. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.